here is the bladder, the urethra. The trigone goes from the bladder base right down to the external meatus. A strong pubourethral ligament holds the urethra firmly at mid-urethra and prevents elongation with effort. With effort, these reflex muscles all contract together and they pull on the trigone. If the ligament is loose, it lengthens from here to here. What the hemostat does is to mechanically support the ligament and prevent stress incontinence. I will show you this right now. Is the patient coughing? Now the hemostat goes immediate. There's the synthesis. It goes immediately behind it. Now he's pushing it behind, and that's holding up the pubourethral ligament. Patient's coughing and not losing urine. Now this is an ultrasound monitoring of the hemostat test. Now this is the resting position, and there is the symphysis. There is the bladder. There is the urethra, there is the anterior vaginal wall and the posterior, and here you can see the pubourethral ligament. It comes down from the symphysis and attaches to the mid urethra. Transferring up here, we have the symphysis here, we have the pubourethral ligaments here, there to there to the mid urethra, mid urethra, bladder, bladder, and here anterior vaginal wall anterior vaginal wall. Over here, when the patient strains or coughs, if the pubourethral ligament is loose, it lengthens. See, it goes from here to here. Now look at it here. It goes from three dots. There's the pubourethral ligament. It lengthens. And it cannot hold the urethra together. These reflex muscles pull down the trigone, look at it here, and opens out the urethra. And look at it here, it goes from closed to open, from C to O, and the vagina just opens out. Look at this, the vagina, anterior vaginal walls opened out. There's in the anterior vaginal wall opening out. Now, over here you saw, earlier in the video, where we put the hemostat immediately behind the symphysis. You saw it press and go just behind the symphysis and you can see here the arrow that is the hemostat and it holds see two dots it holds the pubourethral ligament in place it does not allow it to elongate and look what happens the urethra closes at bladder neck and it closes distally here it's open distally here it's closed distally here it's open at bladder neck here it's closed at bladder neck and what the operation does it puts a suture around here, it's actually around here, and the suture stops the pubourethral ligament lengthening. What the tape does, the tape, we put a tape around here underneath the urethra, and it does the same thing as the tape. The tape goes here and stops it lengthening. It would stop this. This is what the tape would do. Here again, repeating, elongation, Tape stops at elongate, stops at opening. This, the polyester suture will do exactly the same thing. It sutures it and stops it from opening out, stops from elongating. I'm going to show you the anatomy of the operation. Here is a pelvis, pubic symphysis, descending ramus. Here is the vagina, anterior vaginal wall here. Here's the posterior vaginal wall, perineal body, and these are deep transversus perineal ligaments. Now, on the right-hand side is an actual operation. So this operation fits in here. So now these are the sulci. This is the bladder neck. Right? This is the periurethral sulcus on the left side and on the right side. And that's where we make the incisions. Here is the urethra coming down here. And the sutures go from here up behind the symphysis and back down. Now here is an actual operation. I'll compare the anatomy. 
Here, coming across is what we call the external ligament, or it's also called the anterior pubourethral ligament. And it sits right here on the anterior surface of the pubic bone. Coming down, uh, firstly, let me give you the perspective. This is the Foley catheter, and it comes down here. Right, so we're showing the left side, the left paraurethral sulcus. Here it is. There's the Foley catheter here, the Foley catheter here, and the this is where the incision has been made. So it was made from right up from the external ligament right down to bladder neck, which is here, about four centimeters. Now you will see here the anatomy of the pubourethral ligament. It comes from behind the symphysis and it has two branches. It goes to the mid urethra here. There's the urethra. And it also goes laterally. And it attaches to the pubococcygeus muscle, which is here. You can't actually quite see it. And also to the vaginal skin. So what we do with the surgery is we make the incision here four centimeters, two incisions. We open it out and then we, with forceps, and then we put sutures up here to the mid urethra, laterally to the lateral part, up behind the symphysis and down here. The idea is not to tie it too tightly, just loose enough so that it doesn't come down. 